good afternoon everyone so welcome to the last day of seven day national level online faculty development program on outcome based education and essential ai tools for teachers which is being organized by the internal quality assurance cell of Carmel College Autonomous Mala Trishur in association with the Kerala State Higher Education Council. So we would like to welcome Dr. Sunil Job K.A. Adjunct Faculty, Marian College Kuti Kannam, Dr. Raja Gurukal, Vice Chairman, Kerala State Higher Education Council, Dr. Mendes Jacob, Director, PG Department of Computer Applications of Marian College, and all the FTP resource persons and all the distinguished participants. So today is the last day of the seven day FTP. So please note some important details regarding the LMS and certificate availability. So you will have access to the LMS until 27th of August. Uh, that is still midnight. So it's essential to complete all the activities, tasks and MCQs within this time frame to qualify for the certificate. So your certificate for the FDP will be available for download from the LMS starting from next week onwards. And this information will be uh, intimated to you through your email. So once you have successfully fulfilled all the requirements of the program, you can access and download your certificate directly from the LMS. The feedback form will be available in the LMS from 9.30 p.m. today. Uh, it will not be sent to you separately. So my name is Raki Raj. I'll be the event moderator for today's event. So for the first session, let's now uh, welcome Dr. Sunil Job, sir, on the topic, chat GPT and AI tools for implementation of OBE. Over to you, sir. <clears throat> so, okay, uh, Raki, thank you for the introduction. And uh, so as uh, we all know that today we are at the final lap, I mean, the last day of our uh, long journey of seven days uh, FTP. That is, uh, you, uh, you are active with the, both the online sections as well as uh, with the LMS. <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, this uh, last day we have uh, a number of sections uh, uh, that, should, that is going to happen. So I'll be just uh, giving you uh, some detailing on how to customize uh, or how to use the chat GPT uh, for uh, the successful implementation of outcome-based education. Just uh, streamline, streamlining the uh, streamlining this uh, possibilities of chat GPT uh, in the uh, lines of outcome-based education, every phases of outcome-based education. And followed by Dr. Mendes will be interacting with you after my section, and then we'll be passing on to the valentine event that is going to happen uh, where. Uh, uh, Rajan Gurikal sir, uh, will be there uh, as the uh, uh, chief guest for uh, uh, the valetary uh, functions. So uh, the previous three days, I, I think that you have you are having a very detailed discussions on uh, uh, Chat GPT. So uh, at this point of time, there is no need to give you an introduction about Chat GPT as uh, you uh, you will be uh, utilizing the possibilities of Chat GPT to uh this uh day-to-day -day activities uh in the um, classroom environment uh so uh and also uh, i think this section which uh, um this suresh nambudri has given was extremely excellent because he has identified about uh, 120 use cases where uh, teachers could effectively uh integrate the possibilities of chat gpt into their day-to-day uh, curricular and uh, uh, co-curricular activities, how to make the classroom uh, activities very interesting, and so on like that, about 120 use cases uh, he has identified. And it is uh, very, very uh, useful for uh, uh, the, the teachers uh, who are handling sections at uh, higher education because uh, his sections are uh, so customized for higher education's uh, uh, use cases. So what I am going to do is uh, just taking some uh, components that he has discussed with you and uh, formulating it into uh, or putting it into a framework of uh, outcome-based education. So I'm just uh, directly going into uh, this, uh, 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 this use case of how to uh, bring about uh, uh, quality or a quality implementation of outcome-based education by uh, the support of uh, this chat GPT. Uh, so I've got a few slides uh, to share with you. Uh, 
uh, as uh, you have done in the previous uh, three days. Uh, this segment will be also uh, an hands-on sec uh, segment uh, where if you are able to uh, browse the uh, this uh, internet, uh, I mean uh, uh, this chat GPT, uh, if you are able to prompt the chat GPT with the, the correct prompts, you will be able to uh, develop a, uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, the solutions in uh, this uh, uh, outcome-based education. So let me uh, go into my presentation. Uh, so let me share the screen first. So I have uh, uh, two uh, questions to be asked. Uh, whether my screen is okay, uh, whether you can see my screen as well as uh, my sound, whether both are okay, then you can put uh, an S. Whether the screen is visible, yes, yes, both. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So here we go. So this is what we are going to discuss for uh today in the first section of this day uh, so uh, chat gpt enabled outcome based education framework and solutions so uh, as i've told uh, in my introductory remark uh, i'm not going to say anything about what is chat gpt what is the possibility of chat gpt what is the ai tool how ai tool changes the life how ai tool could be integrated into our uh, workspace so that uh, uh, half the burden of our uh, uh, bird, after work of burden of our activities uh, will be uh, uh, could be eliminated. Uh, so that uh, actually, uh, I, I would like to put uh, a post one or two uh, questions here. Actually, there is a uh, uh, this uh, a frequently asked question that whether ChatGPT uh, replace uh, that is uh, uh, an employee. Definitely not. Because ChatGPT is a, uh, or a, any AI tools that we are using of, as of today, at this present level, no uh, tool is 100% perfect. In the sense, it won't give 100% accurate solutions. That is, the any AI tool is just like uh, uh, a friend to, uh, especially uh, this, uh, this um, uh, AI tools, uh, which has been working on the text format. That is the chat format. It is uh, uh, not. It will not hundred. It will not give hundred percent accurate solutions. Actually, uh, when we are working uh, with uh, these uh, machine learning models and AI tools, uh, the accuracy rate uh, will be uh, somewhat about uh, uh, seventy plus uh, accuracy because thirty uh, percent can be uh, absurd answers that it will be given because it is responding to our queries. Our query, in the sense, we will be calling it as prompt. That is, any AI tool will be responding to the prompts that we give uh, to the AI tools. Uh, and that uh, prompt that uh, AI tools give us will not be 100% accurate. It will be about only 30 uh, or 30 plus percentage of accuracy will be there. So uh, while using this AI tool, the thing is that we have we are the master when we are using it. That is what the chat GPT or any AI tool is giving is that it will just reduce or it will be giving about 70% of the work. And the 30% is that it is our role there is to uh, ensure what this chat GPT has given you is uh, right. That is, we uh, we should finally um, customize what the solutions that it is give, uh, and we have to decide whether it could be applied into our uh, workspaces. Uh, so the ultimate decision should be taken by us, because so that is the bigger part while using AI tools. Every every solutions that the AI tools will not uh, that gives will not be the hundred percent paka. And in uh, long run, it can happen that uh, uh, because uh, when the learning becomes more and more progressive, uh, the accuracy rate will go up and up. But at this point of time, uh, we have to uh, check out whether uh, the solutions which has been suggested by these AI tools are okay. And the difference between the AI and uh, the other normal uh, uh, Google uh, search is that it is only a text search that the Google does. But here, the solutions are given uh, by uh, these uh, 
chat gpt uh, from the pre trained uh, from the pre trained uh, because this is a pre trained model from the learning that it has already taken it has been suggesting it from the learning that it has just like a uh, individual because of, uh, if if uh, somebody ask uh, a question to us we will be answering to the questions from uh, the inputs that we have learned just like that uh, the chat gpt is been responding to what we say uh, from the uh, learning that or the training that we have given uh, to uh, this model uh, while we are training this data so uh, the result from the training uh, uh, it will be answering logically from the results that it has uh, taken during the training part and it will be given you so what chat gpt does is that it lessens our work but it gives solutions but that solutions cannot be uh, considered as 100% perfect so we have to be the master to validate the solutions that the chat gpt is been given is been giving so let us go to uh, this uh, uh so the as i've told that my role today is to uh, just customize uh, customize uh, the application of chat gpt into an outcome based education format so now uh, i have tried to uh, uh, give a framework uh, a framework for the outcome based education this could be considered as the framework of an outcome based education so what uh, uh, that is what we could see here is that we can uh, uh, identify three components here this is the first component this is the preactive phase where we are formulating the curriculum where we are formulating the curriculum what comes in between in between this this is uh, this is something uh, you are interacting with the students in an outcome based education uh, environment that is this is the interactive phase this is the phase where you are interacting with the students with the the different pedagogical approaches uh, which is appropriate in the lines of outcome based education and this is the post active phase where after completing our teaching learning uh, and uh, process after that uh, the students have acquired uh, through the learning process what we do is that we have to go with the post active phase where we are doing uh, assessments evaluations like test examinations so uh, in any ex in any formal education system we have got three phase one formulation of the curriculum second the real uh, teaching learning environment uh, uh, and the final thing is that the assessment to what extent that the students have acquired uh, or acquired or uh, attained in the lines of what they have learned and what outcome based education says is that uh, the preactive interactive and postactive phase should be followed by a feedback loop that is on the basis of the assessment to what extent that the students are able to attain uh, uh, or in what uh, level that the college is been able to perform so on the basis of their performance this should be uh, driven back as an input so that on the basis of this final assessments we have to make uh, uh, necessary modifications in the curriculum every periodically so this is a uh, this is a cyclic process outcome based education so in this process throughout that is the chat gpt could help you to uh, make many creative solutions in every phase is whether it is the formulation phase or whether it is the interactive phase where you are interacting with the students or whether it is in the assessment phase or whether uh, it is in the phase where uh, the uh, you are trying to uh, identify uh, the present the present curriculum uh, the positives and the negatives of the curriculum so we have to convert that negative into the positives by restructuring the curriculums in the line of its effect so in every phases the outcome based uh, uh, this uh, chat gpt will be helping you so we can take one by one what is this, this is the formulation phase this is the phase uh, where we have uh, where i have shared with you uh, some ideas on formulation what is peo program educational objectives uh, program outcomes uh, course outcomes how to write a course outcomes uh, all these things we have discussed in the uh, first segment uh, uh, where i was interacting with you uh, in the first two days uh, in the first day about bloom's taxonomy and uh, uh, second day about the formulation of curriculum in the lines of outcome based education where we have analyzed what is peo what is po what is co so we will be uh, identifying these uh, components one by one and we will try to identify the possibility of chat gpt in of every uh, state so this is the uh, topology or this is the uh, framework of outcome based education 
So I have taken the first component, the first component, that is uh, the formulation phase. In the formulation phase, I have just uh, uh, shown you the, that is building block of outcome-based education in the first day slide. That is, uh, uh, in an institution which has already implemented outcome-based education, there will be a vision and mission. And then from the uh, feedback that uh, we get from the stakeholders, as well as in the lines of outcome and uh, uh, this uh, vision and mission, uh, the college will be formulating the educational goals, educational goals, which we call as program educational objective. What is the objective of the program? So this is the first thing that we use to formulate. So that has to be formulated in consultation with the stakeholders, as well as it should be in lines of outcome, uh, lines of the vision and mission. So once the educational goal is uh, set, what we have to identify is that we have to identify what are the graduate attributes that is essential for actualization of these educational uh, objectives. That is what we have discussed in the first uh, graduate attributes. And uh, we have identified that the UGC has given you uh, a set of graduate attributes like uh, we know that uh, disciplinary knowledge, uh, problem uh, solving ability, uh, critical thinking, uh, communication skill, likewise, uh, the ability to use medias, uh, uh, ethics, uh, environment, likewise, we have identified 10 to 15 uh, uh, graduate attributes. So graduate attributes are nothing but this is, those graduate attributes uh, should be attained when the student complete. So that is uh, the, what we mean as graduate attribute. These attributes has to be actualized when the student pass out of the institution. And these graduate attributes will be in the lines of the educational goals. Okay, right. So we are not going into that. So this how to convert a graduate attribute into a outcome statement. So the, it is the graduate attribute we showcase as a program outcome. What the students are capable of doing on the basis of that graduate attribute. So we can use chat GPT. We can use chat GPT for, uh, for what? For writing. Uh, the, here I have taken one graduate attribute, communication skill, communication skill. If you want to convert a communication skill into a program outcome related to the communication skill, we can use, uh, we can get the assistance of chat GPT. So whatever we get from chat GPT will not be hundred percent perfect. You can make some additional inputs and make uh, uh, reframe it and you can take it as uh, uh, the final uh, solution, uh, the final accepted solutions. So uh, actually we know that what we communicate to the chat gpt what is called the prompt is called the prompt so here i have just uh, uh, taken given you the prompt formulate a comprehensive uh, program outcome statement that emphasizes the demonstration of proficient communication skill like this so uh, let, let me uh, check it out uh, let, let, let me check it out because we know that what chat gpt or the ai tools gives is not uh, uh, just like uh, the text search when we uh, search the internet, uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be retrieving information from the different web websites on the basis of the keywords. But every time you make uh, uh, you give a prompt to uh, this uh, chat uh, GPT, this, you won't be getting the same. <coughs> excuse me, you won't be getting the same solutions. It will be uh, giving the different different solutions because the uh, product that it has uh, learned. Uh, it is from the product that it has learned. It will be giving you the solutions. So let me uh, try to give that prompt. I've just uh, shown you the prompt there. <coughs> so this will be available in the LMS. So you can uh, uh, use that for identifying this. So what I've uh, done here is that. <coughs> So this is what uh, uh, this uh, chat GPT has given. The upon completion of the program, the students will demonstrate mastery of proficient communication, showcasing the ability of efficient transcript of interpret ideas, information, arguments through clear and coherent verbal communication uh, through rigorous instruction. So this is what uh, this is what uh, uh, you could uh, take it as uh, uh, suggested by uh, chat GPT. So you are asking chat GPT to convert what? The communication skill, the graduate attribute into what? A program outcome. So you have got a lot of suggestions. On the basis of this, you can uh, take what you feel ideal. 
So uh, upon completion of the program, the students will demonstrate mastery of proficient communication skill, showcasing their ability to if, uh, to effectively transmit and interpret ideas. Like likewise. So uh, what I have got, what I have got. Uh, when I have searched it uh, first time, I, uh, is uh, this is the result that I got. That is the communication skill, the graduate attribute communication skill by the help of chat GPT, I got this. Demonstrate proficient communication skill by effectively transmitting and interpreting ideas, informations and arguments through clear and coherent verbal and written communication, fostering meaningful interactions with diverse audience and facilitate uh, knowledge exchange. Very beautiful, very beautiful. So this is what uh, you got uh, uh, from uh, chat GPT. So what was the graduate attribute? Communication skill. And what is the outcome related to that communication skill? The chat GPT has given you and you can make some, some uh, because I told you that chat GPT is not 100% accurate. There will be some flaw. So you 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 have you should have that competency uh, to identify the flow and uh, refill it to make it perfect. So that's what we got it here. So here, uh, so at this phase, uh, uh, we got uh, uh, this program uh, converted a graduate attribute into a program outcome. So what is next? Uh, in a uh, OB framework, we will be showcasing uh, the first, uh, the different uh, program outcomes that or graduate attributes or program outcomes that should be uh, actualized by the students on completion of the program. So how will they actualize these program outcomes? Definitely through the different courses that you give for the, uh, as a part of the curriculum. So every courses, since it is outcome based education, we have to identify we have to identify if you are selecting a course, okay, uh, operational research. This is the course that you are going to accommodate for a program. So what should be an apt, uh, what should be the apt uh, program uh, course outcome corresponding to that particular uh, course? So this is something every teacher should do. Because program outcomes here uh, will be uh, formulated fr uh, from the uh, part of the college. So the teachers, as we know that, we will be assigned uh, with the different papers or courses. So on the, uh, and it is our responsibility to identify the best possible course outcome for our courses. So how to, for, how to formulate a course outcome uh, for a course that you are handling uh, with the help of ChatGPT. So obviously, when I've been uh, ha handling the section on uh, writing course outcome, uh, I told that one common practice that we have to do, uh, that we normally adopt is that we will take one one module each and on the basis of the module, we will be asking a question, what the students are able to do uh, after completing that module, you'll be getting an answer and on the basis of that answer, you'll be formulating a course outcome. So how we are going to uh, formulate a course outcome with the help of chat GPT. So I have written the prompt here. So what is the prompt? Uh, definitely, uh, because here uh, the chat GPT is just like a person that you are speaking with. Every time you ask uh, a chat GPT, if you are doing, if you are asking something in as a continuation of uh, just like uh, talking to a person, there is no need to uh, say chat GPT that uh, uh, that uh, there is no need to uh, ignore the previous prompt for these conversations. There is no need to say that. Suppose if you are going to uh, uh, communicate a different uh, statement to the, um, that is totally different topic to the chat GPT, you can just uh, ask chat GPT to ignore the prompt that we have previously asked. So now it, if you are asking a person uh, continuously, uh, when you're talking with a person, we are talking about a topics. So every time there is no need to uh, say chat GPT, ignore this, ignore that. Because there, there, there is a continuity here because the entire thing that I'm asking the chat GPT is on the basis of outcome based education. So that is why I am not using that close. Ignore what we have been uh, prompting up to this point of time. So we are not using that. So what is my uh, intention now? Uh, I am handling a program, a course, uh, operational research. Uh, in that operational research, my first module, I have uh, an introduction about operational research, uh, then linear programming, formulation of model. These are the content that I am having. So I want to formulate an outcome, a course outcome uh, on the basis of this uh, module one. So how will I do that? So uh, this is the prompt that I am going to ask. Formulate appropriate course outcome for the course uh, course, what is the course? Operation research. You uh, you can put it in uh, uh, double inverted at MCA level. So it will be better uh, to identify the level also where the following topics are included in module one. 
what are the topics operational research uh, about op leader programming sorry, for sorry to interrupt you actually the okay. screen is not visible uh screen is not visible okay okay i think is it okay now is it okay now yes yes okay okay so uh, yes, okay okay so now what we are doing is that how to write a course outcome uh, by giving the chat gpt these are the content that i am uh, my first module have please uh, formulate a uh, appropriate outcome uh, on the base of this so this is the uh, prompt formulate an appropriate course outcome for the course what is that operational research at mci level where the following topics are included in module 1 so these are the different topics uh, should not uh, should not include more than two course outcomes because uh, uh, I am uh, trying to formulate a course outcome on the basis of each module. So if I'm uh, uh, if if I ask ChatGPT, it will be uh, formulating uh, more uh, four or five outcomes. So if I am got uh, uh, five modules, obviously there will be twenty five. Uh, uh, these uh, outcomes will be there. So you have to give a recommendation because you'll be all the uh, de de details about the prompt engineering definitely uh, Suresh Namudri sir has given you. You have to mention the, uh, the, the, the context, you have to mention what task and you have to give the explanations, details about how uh, the answer should be li like that. So that is the structure of the prompt. So I am just, uh, should not include more than two course outcome for a module. Ensure all course outcomes are from Bloom's taxonomy verbs and ensure each outcome should be pointed to a single unique Bloom's taxonomy. So these are the some uh, descriptions or explanations that I have given chat GPT uh, for formulation of an outcome. So let me check it out whether the things are happening in the right way. So I'm just uh, giving it to chat GPT. So uh, this, this will be available uh, in the uh, this LMS. You can use it. Okay. So I have just given it. Outcome number one. Upon completion of the students will be able to apply their understanding of principles of operational research to formulate real world into uh, real world problems into mathematical models for linear programming. So see how uh, they have applied. So what is the uh, apply? So there is no need to write upon completion of this able to. That is understood. So what is the outcome? Apply the understanding of uh, this and other. Uh, at the end of the course, the students will be proficient in so, uh, solving. So this is what uh, you are getting it. So what I got is that uh, when I am uh, every time when you uh, ask Stat GPT, it will be giving you answers, but it will be having a variety of answers. So you can generate it not only one time, you can generate uh, it, uh, regenerate it two or three times, and you can identify the best. That is a normal procedure you can do. So every search, it won't be taking the uh, it will it won't be answering the same thing. It will be making some differences. So you can make uh, that you can just go on uh, prompting it to, uh, two or three times and. You you can identify which one will be the best so your role is that identify the best so you have to be the uh, you uh, if i uh, if i'm uh, going in a bloom's taxonomy level it is your role to evaluate so you, you have to be more proficient you have to evaluate which one is the ideal uh, so this is so use linear programming technique technique to formulate mathematical model for real world optimization problem the same thing which i have uh, got it when i prompted it now uh, and evaluate and access the effectiveness of various uh, 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 various solutions, methods, and algorithms in operational research, employing critical thinking. So this is something that uh, uh, so very, very beautiful, very beautifully formulated uh, outcome. So uh, the chat GPT will be helping you to formulate outcome. So we identified chat GPT will formulate you to convert a graduate attribute into a program outcome. And you are giving a, a content to the chat GPT and you are giving some descriptions that your outcome should be like, like, like. And the chat GPT will be giving you uh, the uh, the outcome. So you can uh, generate it two or three times and you can identify which one will suit your requirement. So the, so th this is one. So what? 
so uh, i have just uh, completed the first phase formulation phase in the formulation phase our major role is to formulate course outcome and program outcome will be formulated from the co college uh, uh, level so what is the next uh, next uh, th that is the interactive phase so uh, now you are going uh, to uh, interact with the students interact with the students so in this interaction interaction phase what are the, the main components which you will be identify uh, you will be identifying the syllabus you will be identifying the syllabus in the lines of outcomes so syllabus will be there so uh, on the basis of the syllabus you will be having content so as a teacher what is our rule suppose if i want to teach a topic so uh, you have to identify which is the method which is apt for this particular content so it is our expertise there is no need to ask chat gpt uh, 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 what method that i have to adopt for teaching such and such topic so if you want to get a variety of methods if you want to bring some innovations in the classrooms you can just uh, have some consultation with the chat gpt let chat gpt also give you some suggestions if it is good you can adopt it so identifying the method of teaching and uh, uh, we know that now uh, 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 learning is more important than teaching so you should give the different activities to the learner. What all activities you want to give to the learner for mastering such and such topic? You can ask that GPT there. And in teaching learning process, there are two evaluations which has been happening. Something which will progress, which have to progress while you're teaching. You want to know whether the students are learning in the lines of what you're teaching. So that, that evaluation is known as formative evaluations. So in an outcome-based education, formative evaluation is very, very, very important. That is formative evaluations will help you to ensure whether the students are progressing in the lines of the outcome. So at, uh, while you're teaching, you have to identify different indicators. Indicators may be a question or an activity or something uh, that you are asking the students so that to identify whether uh, the students are progressing in the lines of the outcome. So you can ask ChatGPT, what are the assessment format evaluation techniques that I could adopt uh, in order to ensure such and such outcomes? So the ChatGPT will be giving you suggestions. So while working, the ChatGPT can come to you just like a friend, just like a friend interacting with you. What should I do at this point of time? So ChatGPT will be, sometimes you'll be giving some blunders. So you have to be the master. That is why I told that whatever ChatGPT say will not be 100% perfect, 70 to 80% perfection will be there. And the 20% validation should be done by you. So what identified few teaching methods appropriate for actualization of the set outcomes. So when we are uh, teaching, uh, in the lines of outcome-based education, what should be the center? What should be the center? Outcome. Because everything should be so constructively aligned in the lines of outcome. That is the methodology that you have to adopt. Because uh, I, I don't think that uh, uh, in this uh, um, uh, se segment, uh, you have not gone deeper into the pedagogical analysis. We have just been formulation as well as assessment phase. So this is something very, very important. Because while you are customizing your classes in the lines of uh, uh, outcome-based education, who should come in the center? Outcome. And our activities should be so constructively aligned uh, in the lines of the outcome, isn't it? So outcome. So if you're giving an assignment, what should come in the uh, in the center? What is the outcome that you are going to bring in the student by giving this uh, assignment? So the assignment should be given on the lines of the outcome. So outcome based means everything should be centered around outcome. So you can get uh, suggestions from the chat GPT. Identified few methods. Let me check. So this is the this is the this is the outcome which chat gpt has recommended me and i have selected that this is okay according to my curriculum i have selected it what use linear programming techniques to formulate mathematical model for real world optimization this was the outcome so i want to suggest so this is the outcome related to which topic module one so module one i have identified one outcome so when I uh, ensure this outcome in the students, definitely uh, the, the content that I'll be using is uh, the content of the module one. So from the content of the module one, I'll, I have to realize uh, this is the outcome that the students will be able to actualize on completion of the module one. So what all activities uh, should I adopt? What all methods should I adopt for actualization of this outcome? This is what uh, I am going to prompt it to the chat GPT. Suggest a few methods. 
teaching methods that could be applied to attain the outcome. What is the outcome? Use linear programming techniques to formulate mathematical models for real world optimization problem uh, in an outcome based education format with appropriate indicators for formative evaluation. See here, here I have just uh, given you uh, that is the intended outcome is, is in the center. And on the line of that outcome, we have to formulate the different teaching, learning activities. That is what I am going to ask ChatGPT. And, and all this ChatGPT should be uh, followed by, all that activity should be followed by appropriate indicators or formative assessments. So I am going to ask ChatGPT about this. So uh, this is the uh, next prompt. Going to ChatGPT. Paste it. So, okay, what ChatGPT has been telling? Uh, case based methods, uh, problem solving workshops, computer based simulations, uh, project uh, based learning, uh, classroom discussions, and peer review. So these are the methods that so you are getting a different uh, you can bring up you can take away uh, this monotonous uh, the same procedure throughout and bring live to the classrooms different methods are suggested very very detailed you can just see what ChatGPT has been said uh, a case based method that the present real world optimization problem from various domains uh, and guide students through the process of formulation indicators the students so these are the indicators that could be adopted the students ability to identify relevant variables and constraints uh, uh, the this uh, quality of the linear programming models formulated by the students these are the indicators so uh, it will be giving you what activity what method what indicators that should be adopted uh, so uh, uh, you can prompt it like this. So this is what the prompt that ChatGPT has given to me. What are the methods that I could use for actualization this? So what ChatGPT has suggested means lecture and demonstration method, problem-based methods and case studies. I could adopt this one. So I don't, and if you want, uh, if you want collaborative learning, you can apply that. And if you want real world application projects, so all these methods could be is suggested by ChatGPT and we can use these methods for actualization of what, what goal use uh, so this is the outcome if for re realization of this outcome you can uh, adopt these methods so here uh, also uh, for lecture and demonstration method what assessments you could give you can give a quiz or short exercises and comprehensions so the chat gpt is been very beautifully changed. this is the method you can adopt and if you want to ascertain whether the students have attained uh, uh, this you can adopt a quiz or short exercises the problem based method uh, so, uh, so the, uh, the collaborative learning ability to explain, justify their solutions during group discussion. So if you are adopting collaborative learning, so you, you should give an opportunity to the students, how they explain the uh, thing, how they justify uh, uh, the, their stand uh, or all these things will be able to identify whether the students are uh, bringing with the uh, genuine solutions or whether they're progressing effectively. So this is something very effectively uh, the chat GPT could be, be helping you. Uh, for formulation uh, so uh, what is next one so uh, you have identified uh, here uh, we have identified uh, the different uh, learning methods so you can ask similarly what learning activities that you could uh, uh, give so you have suggested problem uh, problem based learning this is the method uh, this is the method that uh, i am i have suggested the chat gpt has given a number of methods i am going to uh, i am going to uh, adopt this method problem based learning uh, methods and case studies i am going to adopt problem based learning methods so i am confused for uh, adopting that method what learning activities that i should give to the students so i have got little confusion in that so i cannot chat gpt he is a friend of mine so what it, could i hear what activity could so you can uh, set the context as a uh, 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 this uh, um, a teacher handling operation research. That is the context. You can, uh, if you want to make it a little more polished, I just uh, only mentioned the essence, right? You, you can make it a little more polished as a teacher handling uh, uh, this uh, outcome based uh, this uh, operation research. Uh, what activity could you suggest for a problem PBL means problem based learning? So the PBL is what uh, uh, is been suggested problem based learning for uh, students of MCA program uh, uh, for the attainment of the outcome. So this is what I'm going to ask. 
so uh, the chat gpt has given me you can adopt uh, uh, different methods like problem based learning uh, uh, so uh, if i am using problem based uh, uh, learning what learning activities i could i uh, give to the uh, students what learning activities and uh, the details of the activities uh, that i could give uh, so uh, i am going to uh, give, give that what learning activities where is it okay what learning activities could uh, uh, suggest for problem based learning to the students of mcia program for the attainment of the outcome this one uh, okay so what are the uh, learning activity it has been suggesting a number of learning activities like uh, inventory optimizations uh, uh, course allocations like that it, it will be suggesting different learning activities so i have just uh, taken uh, a few learning activities and uh, uh, details of activities what is that uh, optimization of uh, uh, optimization case study uh, product planning and scheduling it will be every time it will be giving you multiple things so this is the learning activity and what detail activity provide a real world optimization problem from the field like logistic uh, supply chain finance and resource, uh, resource allocations so you can uh, provide a real world optimization problem uh, from any of these area so that the students will be able to learn uh, just like a, as an optimization case study. We can just give an optimization case study related to any of this field. So uh, obviously you will be again confused. So what uh, what is it? Provide a real world optimization problem. This is the activity that I would going to, uh, uh, I have suggested that is provide a real world optimization problem from field like finance, uh, so it has suggested many fields like uh, uh, supply chain, finance, etc. Uh, like finance for the attainment of this one. So uh, what is the uh, scenario that I have to take? What, what uh, case study that I could give uh, from uh, uh, the optimization problems like uh, uh, what you could say? Uh, in short, you can drill deeper, deeper, deeper into very, very granular level. Uh, on uh, Firstly, I asked uh, what method. So it has suggested different method so uh, i have suggested uh, one method uh, I, for this method what learning activity that i should give to the students so it has suggested a different learning activity so for any one learning activity what scenario i could give so i am going drilling deeper deeper into it uh, so that i could give it uh, the best to the students so uh, let me check it out provide a learning activity uh, so this is uh, the prompt uh, because since we have got limited time uh, uh, these prompts will be available uh, in the lms you can make use of that so what is that so it has been very beautifully it is it, it is very beautifully uh, you as an investigative manager tasked with the construction of opti uh, optimal investigation portfolio client the client uh, want to allocate the so it has been very beautifully giving the scenario so it has been very beautifully giving the scenario in a very detail. These are the key informations that you could give. These are the objectives. These are the variables. So it has been giving a very detailed uh, scenario uh, for uh, uh, the question that you have asked. So I have just uh, give, give, taken only a very, uh, because the entire thing, uh, I, if I'm just putting it, it will become more, uh, mess, it will mess up. So I just uh, taken only the essence of that. So uh, when I asked them to give, give a real world optimization problem, uh, uh, you, uh, the scenario or what uh, the chat GPT has suggested is that uh, you work as a finance analyst for the investment form of the manager client. Your objective is to optimize the allocation of the investment across. So this is the use case which chat GPT has suggested. So you can give this uh, project to the students so that while doing this project, the students will be able to identify uh, uh, the real use cases on how to uh, integrate uh, uh, linear, uh, this uh, linear programming model uh, in such and such scenario uh, in order to get optimal solutions. So they are getting a very uh, re real-time learning. So yeah, apart from giving some problems and uh, giving some solutions, you can have a variety of methods, uh, collaborative methods. For collaborative method, what learning activity? Uh, for what uh, learning activity? Uh, what topic you could suggest? up to minute details you could ask uh, into uh, the chat gpt so asking is prompting so while asking you can give uh, details so chat gpt will be answering in accordance with the detail you can regenerate it a uh, few uh, many times 
and you can identify the best uh, uh, that apt for your uh, situations. So this is uh, uh, there. And uh, so now we have traversed uh, the first uh, uh, the first thing. What was the first thing? Formulation. For we identified uh, to convert uh, uh, what uh, this uh, um, graduate attribute to our program outcomes. Then how to uh, write a, a course outcome from uh, a module. Uh, so we identified some uh, outcomes then uh, uh, so uh, in an outcome based education uh, what comes in the center it is not the syllabus it is the outcome for uh, so uh, the first module will be equivalent to the first outcome definitely uh, so uh, with respect to the first outcome what method that i have to uh, adopt uh, for actualization of the first uh, outcome that means the first module it will be suggesting a different types of method for that method what learning activity i could give it will be suggesting a learning activity for this learning activity what scenario or what uh, uh, topic i should give it will be again giving you uh, so it's a very beautiful thing uh, you could ask and finally uh, you can ask uh, you coming to the assessment the third one uh, i have first shown you the entire topology formulation uh, phase uh, then uh, interactive phase where you have to uh, get uh, information regarding methods, uh, learning activities and formative assessments. And what is the final assessments regarding in the lines of outcome based education? You can prompt it. So suggest a few course level assessments that you could get uh, you could uh, that could be administered for the assessment of uh, the CEO. What is the CEO use? This is the CEO which I have been uh, using it. So I, I can just uh, uh, copy it, suggest a few. So it will be suggesting, okay, problem solving uh, assignments, case studies with the uh, uh, model formulations, uh, uh, in class problem solving simulation. So uh, you are getting a different uh, way, uh, different assessments, uh, uh, writing reports, uh, outline uh, quizzes or test, uh, uh, peer assessments. Likewise, it has been suggested about 10, uh, 10 methods. So likewise, uh, uh, you will be getting. I have just only taken few of them. Okay, problem solving assignment could be given for assessments, uh, case uh, studies and analysis, outline quizzes and assessments. So these are the final summative assessments that I could uh, 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 administer uh, in order to ascertain to what level that the students have attained this. And now, uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, in an outcome-based education format, one important thing is that mapping, mapping what uh, an outcome into with the uh, so, um, uh, with uh, the program outcomes. So, that is something uh, very important. That is something very important. So, this was the outcome that we have been using. Use linear programming techniques for formulating a mathematical models for real world uh, problem. So, these are the different program. Uh, these are the uh, uh, different uh, uh, program outcomes. I'm just taking a dummy program outcomes like uh, uh, discipline knowledge, communication skill, critical thinking, problem solving, and analytical reasoning. So, uh, so the prompt. Uh, it won't be 100 percent right but you have to uh, you should know uh, what are the uh, this uh, strategy by which you you have to prompt but uh, you can just ask chat gpt you can just get some information there uh, so even identify the mapping strength of the ceos uh, what is the ceo uh, use the program uh, to uh, the pos what are the pos uh, disciplinary knowledge, communication skill, critical thinking, problem solving, and analytical reasoning for the course operational research. The mapping strength you have to say three for high, two for moderate, and one for uh, one for low uh, relationship and zero for no relationship. Very low relationship may be considered as zero. So these are the instructions that you've given. Uh, so you can just uh, uh, use that. Uh, I because uh, since I am in uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 you can just uh, copy it there. So, uh, so here the mapping strength, uh, the disciplinary knowledge high, the communication skill moderate, uh, critical thinking because uh, they are dealing with the uh, formulations etc. High. Uh, so, likewise, it has been suggested analytical reasoning because this is a highly analytical thing that uh, use uh, for analyzing. Such, uh, so, analysis is there. Problem uh, you are giving a problem. Uh, communication skill you are you are only dealing with the uh, uh, what question and this uh, um, that is uh, uh, building model uh, solving it mathematical thing has been predominant so disciplinary knowledge 
it's something very high because you are taking the students into an application so discipline knowledge is high critical thinking is very important there uh, they have to identify the uh, scenario a formulate model critical thinking is important problem solving is there analytical reasoning is there communication skill is moderate it's communicate because more communication is not there it is uh, so so you got uh, the mapping strength the mapping strength is being identified is being uh, identified there so this is a, a, a very miraculous thing that chat gpt uh, you can get uh, the assistance from the chat gpt for this and even you can uh, uh, suppose if you are uh, in the assessment uh, you can uh, ask chat gpt to create uh, questions what questions that i i, I could give uh, like I, I think uh, this is something uh, that uh, uh, the Suresh Namudri has uh, already shown you how to formulate uh, different types of questions. Uh, you can give the uh, topic and ask them to uh, formulate question, or you can give that outcome. So here uh, I am giving an outcome. I didn't give the top, the content. I have just given uh, because uh, in an outcome based education, outcome is the hero. So I am giving the outcome and ask the chat GPT to go into create uh, some multiple choice questions. So act as a teacher, handling course operational research and prepare two multiple choice questions related to the outcome utilizes. One question should be from understanding level and on the application level uh, uh, provide four options of which one is correct. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what uh, I'm going to uh, give to the chat GPT. So question number one, multiple choice. So that is an, what is, what is question number one? Which of the following is the best, uh, uh, describes the primary purpose of utilizing? So here, generate complex, so th these are uh, the different, uh, so it's an understanding. Which are the following best uh, uh, describes uh, the uh, primary purpose of utilizing linear programming uh, techniques in, so this is uh, an understanding to check. Uh, then uh, formulate a real world. Pro uh, so this is the uh, correct answer. The correct answer also the chat GPT has suggested. Then what is this uh, application level? A company want to optimize the product scheduling. So this is an application level question. The correct answer. So this is uh, something very, uh, very interesting as well as this will facilitate you. Uh, so actually, uh, what I would like to say is that suppose if, uh, if you if we want to do a task uh, in three hours. If you are doing it uh, individually in three hours, you can reduce the time uh, into a one hour if you get the assistance of chat GPT. No, even less than one hour, about half an hour, you can complete the work. Uh, otherwise, without chat GPT, if you have taken three hours, you can do it in uh, half an hour. The thing is that you should have the expert. Uh, sometimes chat GPT may be giving wrong answers. So you have to uh, generate it few times and you can select the best. And your selection is uh, on the basis of your evaluation, on the basis of the context uh, that you are using. Uh, uh, this so uh, so which are the following best describe the linear programming so uh, this is uh, uh, one uh, solutions uh, one multiple choice question that i've suggested suppose if you're asking five they'll be giving five uh, for each multiple choice questions if you're uh, setting different levels it will be uh, framing questions in that and definitely uh, in an outcome based education scenario uh, the direct uh, assessments are those which has been uh, directly performed by the teachers uh, in the lines of the courses suppose if you are asking uh, uh, the students to evaluate a self evaluation that is something very important in chat uh, in outcome based education uh, about 90% of the scores will be uh, taken from the direct observations of the students cumulative performance and 10% could be assessed by uh, taken from uh, their personal assessments uh, pro probably uh, you, uh, it may be uh, from a survey that has been conducted at the end of the course or the program uh, uh, asking students to what level they'll be able to uh, perform such and such tasks on the basis of the response you will be able to identify what is their level that they think that they have attained or they, you can collect information from um, uh, this uh, uh, if the students go out for the project or you can get uh, uh, information from the peer review from the other students on how much uh, they are contributing for uh, uh, the project. Uh, uh, likewise, uh, you can get a number of indirect ways of assessment of the students. So uh, uh, as a uh, uh, 
so the normal uh, which we always do is that uh, after completion of a course you will be just giving them a, a survey uh, and the part of the survey will be considered as an indirect assessment suppose if you want to frame questions for the survey you can uh, just uh, act as a teacher handling uh, course uh, uh, operational research prepare a survey type question for indirect assessment of the student for rating the outcome uh, uh, this is the outcome that uh, you have suggested use four point scale uh, for the same uh, starting from no idea from no idea so what is this uh, so uh, uh, you can give give it like this Our time is being going much first. So survey question, sure. The question is that please rate your level of confidence in your ability to utilize DNA programming. So this is the, the one survey question that you could give uh, in the lines of uh, the first outcome. If you ask them to prepare two, it will be preparing two. So you can uh, uh, take uh, two questions and take the weighted average about uh, uh, for uh, uh, your assessment programs. Likewise, if you have got uh, uh, five outcomes and if you are asking uh, to prepare three uh, 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 in the survey questions for each outcomes, it will be preparing uh, 15 questions uh, uh, and you can uh, take off. It is a better practice to include uh, uh, more number of questions and you can uh, finally select it. Uh, which one uh, will be ideal uh, for your purpose so you can make selections like that so uh, what i'm trying to bring is that okay this is the please rate your level of understanding and ability to utilize dna programming techniques this this could be the question and this is the uh, scale that you could give so they can answer uh, i'm very co confident high moderate low and uh, uh, no idea about this particular area so likewise the students will be able to do that and uh, uh, in our topology uh, we, we found that Okay, in the formulation, how to interact with the students and how to assessments. And finally, uh, on the basis of this uh, final assessment, you have to make uh, uh, what all thing, what all change that I have to periodically uh, make. That also you can ask uh, uh, the chat GPT. So it, it should go in the, a cyclic process. Formulation, teaching learning, assessments, and the result that we get for the assessment uh, should uh, be uh, directed towards the input like a cybernetic system uh, what, what did it mean on the basis of the uh, final output we have to make some changes in the uh, this uh, revisit the co's or po's or the curriculum or activities so that uh, in, uh, uh, in in the further stages uh, very excellent uh, way of the classroom ambience our teaching learning environment could be made so this is the continuous assessments so uh, how to modify the ob curriculum from the feedback from the stakeholders uh, brief three points so uh, uh, that also you can just uh, uh, ask that dpt okay uh, so that also so uh, refine learning outcome update assessment methods uh, collaborative engagements so chat gpt has, 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 has been suggested that you have to reframe redefine the learning outcomes in the lines of the output that you get from uh, the final result or from the uh, feedback survey of the students passing out uh, of your colleges for the survey from the uh, employees uh, who employ them from the feedback you have to revisit uh, the learning outcome update the assessment methods the assessment methods will not be apt the, the students who, whom you are rating as uh, uh, proficient is not been uh, much proficient in the real life situations or in the real uh, scenario so revisit uh, the assessment methods then uh, collaborative en engagements collaborative engagements then and there you have to uh, get the feedbacks from the stakeholders and make a uh, revisit so this is what uh, chat gpt has been uh, suggesting on uh, on uh, uh, how to improve how, how to make the continuous improvements so what is this <laughs> is this the scenario what has been happening now no i think not. so this is what uh, i've told that awesome chat gpt is the real workhorse now we have got even more time for meeting
Why? Because ChatGPT is been doing about 60 to 70 percentage of your work. So uh, you have got a lot of free time uh, to get engaged in uh, something that you are uh, more interested. Uh, so that is what I've told that uh, something if you are doing it alone, uh, if, you, uh, if you're, it will take three hours with chat GPT, you can make it uh, to about uh, uh, one hour or, or even half an hour. Uh, you can complete the task with the help of chat GPT. And I again repeat, your expertise uh, should be over the chat GPT because it is your expertise uh, that should be used for the final selections of what chat GPT has said. Oh, what is this? <laughs> uh, I have not included a thank you slide here. Just I want to ask chat GPT to give you thank you. Okay. What is this? I didn't register a thank you for you. Instead, I asked the chat GPT to give you a thank you. So uh, le let me uh, check out whether uh, what chat GPT uh, has said uh, in this line. So this is for you. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to you, your active participation in the enlightening seven-day faculty development program on chat GPT and AI tools, organized by Carmel uh, College Mala in collaboration with Kerala State Higher Education Council. Your engagement and enthusiasm greatly contributed to the success of this uh, enriching learning experience. This is what chat GPT has been telling to you. I have just generated it from chat GPT guy giving them a prompt. So uh, that's all uh, for uh, um, from my part, and I think this is the first segment for today. And uh, there is a uh, uh, two or three segment to go. Uh, Mendes uh, will be joining you. And if you have any queries in this, uh, uh, I am just uh, uh, stopping my presentations. So you could ask me. So over over to over to you. Over to you. Uh, Rocky, if there is any. So, if anyone has any queries, uh, uh, you could put uh, make it fast because uh, Amanda sir, uh, section will be following now. So, uh, I think you got it clear. What I'm trying to, I didn't uh, want to teach you anything about ChatGPT because uh, three days excellent. You have made a very excellent progress in ChatGPT. Only that experience I've just uh, uh, showcased in that cycle formulation. Methods, uh, learning activities, assessments, and how to make continuous assessments by the by the help of ChatGPT. Only that's what I try to bring it. So okay, okay. I think uh, nothing uh, is coming up. Uh, I think uh, let us conclude because uh, uh, Mendesa has to uh, take up the section after this and uh, followed by validatory section. So I, I'm concluding. So thank you uh, because first two days we met, we interacted. And uh, I'm very happy that I could come back again, uh, at least for a short time, uh, to uh, make a conclude uh, at the final uh, segment on uh, that is uh, customizing uh, these uh, possibilities of ChatGPT and AI tools to our environment, our topic of uh, this uh, uh, workshop, uh, OBE. So thank you all. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now let's move forward uh, with the next session by Dr. Mendes Jacob, sir, on the topic OB implementation, the process and benefits for accreditation. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? So, yes, sir, you, you are audible. <laughs> chat gpt and ai tools now this is the last concluding session where we will uh, the ob implementation uh, how uh, what are the processes involved and how it is benefited for the accreditation process so many of our faculty members they used to ask how, what is the process how we will start and uh, how we will proceed like this so i will just share you uh, the process and then uh, how the uh, OB implementation is helping in the accreditation process. Uh, 
So we will discuss all these things now. So we will start with the implementation process. These are the steps in, uh, involved in the implementing uh, outcome-based education in the higher education institutions. So starting with the training, the basic concept, for example, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. So we have the, we had the section on the first day itself about Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, everywhere Bloom's taxonomy has got its own importance, like uh, when framing questions, assessments, then uh, designing outcomes, uh, mapping, everywhere we uh, we have to consider Bloom's taxonomy. Then the OB architecture, preparation of OB manual, that is very important because uh, there comes the policy of the institution, how the OB process is structured uh, in the institution. So we have to prepare an OB manual that will be helpful for uh, accreditation purpose also. Then formulation of outcomes. Uh, each and every faculty member, they have to design the course outcomes for uh, their subjects. Then curriculum development and uh, outcome mapping. Identifying innovative teaching, learning and assessment methods. So over a period of time, we have to improve this. Every year, we may be identifying more uh, innovative teaching, learning and assessment methods. And again, by using ChatGPT and AI tools, we can have a lot many of the teaching, learning and assessment methods. Preparation of outcome oriented course plans and assessment plans. OB focused question paper generation. We can use uh, ICT tools if required for uh, OB focused questions as uh, assessments. Then attainment calculation. Again, we can use some ICT tools for calculation of the attainment because it's not possible manually. Generating and understanding reports of OB. So all these reports, uh, if we can understand what it is and uh, it will give a trend. There are a lot of uh, trend analysis we can receive from the, the analytics reports. Based on that, we can plan our curriculum. We can uh, even we can uh, implement some remedial measures on many things that I have discussed in the last section. Then analyzing feedback and improvising the process. Uh, and finally, uh, you have seen that uh, ChatGPT and AI tools can can be used for uh, easy and effective implementation. So this is the, the complete cycle to start with the, the understanding of the taxonomy level center. And finally, uh, we have to analyze the feedback and uh, improvise the process. So this is the end of process. Then coming to the accreditations, uh, especially I'm focusing more on the NAC accreditation because if you are going for NB accreditation, definitely OB is an integral part of it uh, everywhere you have to include outcome-based education. Now, coming to the NAC accreditation process in the criteria one, curriculum development and implementation, there itself you can mention about OB manual. So this uh, OB will be an underlying thread if you go from uh, criteria one to criteria seven. So it will be always there. Effective curriculum planning, delivery, and evaluation through a well-defined process. What is the well-defined process? We can mention it in the OB manual. Interdisciplinary interdepartment courses, why we are having this uh, type of courses or certificate or add-on courses. Uh, what is the need analysis? So if you are doing the need analysis through these analytics reports of OB, then it is crystal clear. So you can say that uh, we have that reports from the OB analytics so that uh, we are adding more uh, courses, value-added courses or add-on courses uh, to fill the gap. Then. Um, when we implement outcome-based education, definitely you need a lot of projects work. For example, in every semester, you can have a project or a mini project or something like that, field work, field visits, uh, many type of internships, then research projects, industry visits. All these will contribute to the attainment calculation of OB. So even if you can have an industry visit, uh, the output of that industry visit, you can, you can <coughs> uh, contribute it to the uh, calculation of attainment. Cross-cutting issues relevant to professional ethics, gender, human values, environment, and sustainability. All these things, you know, these uh, will come under the program outcomes. So whatever uh, uh, post content uh, you are adding in, in various topics like this into the curriculum, definitely all this will reflect in your uh, uh, attainment of POs. Then in the criteria two, assessment of the learning levels of the students, like uh, slow learners and advanced learners, you can identify using this OB uh, analytics reports. Uh, then student-centric methods uh, to enhance learning experience, such as experiential learning, integrated interdisciplinary learning, participatory learning, problem-solving methodologies, 
these are direct questions under various indicators in criteria two. So all student centric methods are definitely add value to the OB implementation process. So once if you start OB implement implementation, then you have to think about the student centric methods and these all methods, these are things which can contribute more to the OB implementation process. Student performance and learning outcomes, these are the direct question where we can showcase the attainment calculations. And criteria three, uh, many of the institutions we are conducting workshops, seminars, we have collaborative activities, then we have uh, yeah, uh, MOUs with the institutions uh, for our own job training or internship or um, uh, student faculty exchange programs, collaborative research, many things we do. And again, consultancy and, uh, consultancy and extension works. So what is the purpose of all these things? What is the outcome? So the outcome, definitely you can map with the different uh, POs or PSOs. And some of them, uh, some of these activities, you can even connect with your course. So in that way, OB will guide you through these criteria and the purpose of all these activities. Uh, criteria four, uh, definitely there are ICT enabled facilities like uh, smart class, LMS, all these things we can mention up there. And now, in addition to the ICT tools, the uh, the basic ICT tools, we have the AI tools, the chat GPT and AI, that also you can incorporate there. Again, uh, but by, when we use a learning management system, for example, we have a learning management system for this faculty development program, where we have uh, included workshop activity, lesson activity, and I think you have, so most of you have gone through all these, uh, um, uh, these tasks and assignments, uh, so that more learning is happening. And that is where uh, we can have the student centric methods. So implementing a learning management system, if it is not there in the institution, definitely will help the proper implementation of OB. Coming to the criteria five, capability enhancement and development schemes such as soft skill development, language and communication skill development. So how the institution is catering to the needs of the students in the skill enhancement. And the more uh, important is the 21st century skills like creative and critical thinking, problem solving, which are in tune with the new education policy. Actually, in the new education policy, these are the recommended skills of the 21st century. So uh, again, we can connect this with the OB. Coming to the uh, next level, students benefited by training. Uh, definitely, this is the outcome. Uh, the placements the number of placements of the student the students these are the outcomes actually okay uh, criteria six implementation of e-governance in the areas of operation such as academy planning and development student admission and support examination so especially this examination when we implement uh, ict tools uh, uh, you can showcase it even for uh, implementing ob you can use some ict tools so that you can showcase all these things uh, for the accreditation purpose um, when we implement OB, definitely there are a lot of uh, training requirements, especially for the faculty members, a lot of learning and relearning is required, uh, and the continuous training is required. So you can mention all these things uh, connected with the OB implementation process. And OB as a best practice, like in the seven criteria, you can click, uh, have uh, OB as a best practice, you can mention it. Like uh, clearly defined learning outcomes are there. That is one of the best practice. OB emphasizes clear and measurable learning outcomes for students. So it's a clarity of focus should be there and uh, it should be measurable. Health institutions ensure desired levels of knowledge and skills. That is, uh, we call it assurance of learning. I have mentioned it in the last session. Uh, we can say that we are following assurance of learning. So that is again a best practice we can showcase for the accreditation purpose. And then focus on student learning. Uh, OB focus on student learning rather than teaching. Uh, institutions can design curriculum and assessments aligned with the desired outcomes. So once we fix the outcomes, then we can uh, design the curriculum. So we have to uh, work backwards. And usually that is not the process uh, nowadays in the institutions. Continuous improvement. OB encourages innovative teaching, learning, continuous assessment and evaluation. Health institutions identify areas for improvement in teaching methods, curriculum and learning outcomes. Through this OB analytics report, definitely we can uh, identify the areas of improvement. 
in the teaching methods uh, or uh, in the uh, curriculum again teaching learning assessments everywhere we can have a comparative study we can have the analytics we can use the analytics and for uh, uh, improving uh, the activities if there is any improvement required and a lot of flexibility and adaptability is there OB allows institutions to be more flexible and adapt adaptable curriculum and teaching methods can be customized to meet individual or group needs so as uh, we usually say every student is unique so we can identify the strengths of each of the students strengths and weakness and we can have different uh, teaching methods or different uh, activities for uh, uh, each of the students that again you have to use some ICT tools or uh, some learning manual system so that we can have different type of uh, uh, activities for uh, the different students. Better preparation for the workforce that is again OB as a best practice you can showcase all these things OB helps institution prepare students for the workforce. Uh, students acquire knowledge and skills that employees are looking for contributes to economic development of the country. See, uh, the traditional system, uh, you'll be teaching theory, uh, maybe your questions will be more mostly in the understand level or remember level. But when we start implementing OB, uh, we need to have higher order questions so that uh, the employability of the students will be improved, so that they will get placed. And uh, um, the long run, we can say that we are providing quality education through our institutions. Uh, some addition tips like uh, identify specific performance criteria for each learning outcome. These are possible. Uh, we can identify specific performance criteria for each learning outcome. Use descriptive feedback to provide students with specific information about their performance. Through this uh, analytics reports, we can have a, a, a feedback. We can prepare a feedback for each and every student. That will definitely help them. We encourage students to reflect on their learning and use self-assessment to identify areas for improvement. Even the surveys help the students to reflect on their own uh, learning and uh, based on their activities, they can uh, have a self-appraisal. So that will definitely help them. Use their portfolios to document and showcase their learning and growth. So when we start implementing OB, a lot of activities will be there so that uh, uh, the students can have their own portfolios. So what all activities they have done, what all projects or what all internships they have done. Uh, all these things can be showcased. Okay. Then we can use standardized test to assessments. Sorry, uh, standard, uh, standardized test or assessment to measure quantitative metrics. Uh, we can have some, uh, even some third party tools you can use for uh, assessments set benchmark scores to measure student achievement against specific standards or goals so we are fixing some targets even for goals outcomes we are fit, fixing uh, some targets and uh, uh, based on some target we can measure we can uh, we can benchmark so that uh, we can measure the student achievement then use data analysis to identify trend or patterns in student performance over time that already we have discussed last, last time how the, the analytics are useful Use comparability analysis to evaluate the effectiveness of different teaching methods or curriculum interventions. That also is possible. Even not only we can uh, analyze the student performance, even if, uh, we can analyze the different uh, teaching methods or different activities we used to provide to the students. We can just uh, uh, have a, an, an analysis of that. And uh, year on year, we can improve on Use data visualization tools to prevent, present data in a clear and understandable way. That also is possible. Um, with the visualization tools, we can understand uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the analytics part in a better way. So these are the uh, things we can take into account uh, while implementing OB. Uh, focus on quality improvement. So naturally, all the accreditation process, all the accreditation process, uh, you know, uh, will be measuring the quality of the education in an institution, how we are providing the quality. So implementing OB means definitely we are improving the quality of the education, both in the teaching or uh, the learning and uh, definitely the employability of the students. So in that sense, um, uh, if you can look at in the long-term perspective, 
definitely it will help the institution. So that is about this uh, um, accreditation and uh, uh, the OB process. Then if you have any uh, any doubts, you can just ask. Or in future, if you want to contact me, this is my contact number. Uh -huh. So there are some questions, I will just answer that. Uh -huh. This is a learning management system. Uh, yeah, actually, we have customized the model and the activities, the assess, uh, the task and assignments, everything, the content we have provided into the LMS. Uh, students have different learning needs, styles, spaces, etc. So outcome-based learning becomes homogenization of learning. No, it is not homogenization. Actually, we can have a, a different uh, learning activities for different students for uh, because every student is unique. When we implement OB, you can have a lot of activities. And uh, if we can use some uh, tools like a learning management system so that uh, uh, we can provide different activities. Is it the right practice to categorize these students as loan and as No, I am also not for it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I will say uh, every student is unique. Uh, flow learners and advanced learners, these are terms used by NAC. Only for that purpose, I have mentioned it. Uh, I used to use, uh, you know, like this, every student is unique and I'm well aware of it. Uh, yes, no, uh, we cannot say like that, madam. Uh, unique talents and passion of students will fall outside those outcomes. No, we can design outcomes in such a way that, uh, uh, you know, once a student who is uh, joining for a particular program, when he pass out of the program, uh, he should definitely showcase some, uh, you know, some skills. Then only he should join for that particular program. The unique talents of students will follow up. So, okay. And remedial classes be shown in the college master timetable. Uh, Fermodial classes, we can do it in many ways, you know, even we can uh, have peer learning activities. Uh, that depends on the, the policy of the institution, whether you have to show the remedial classes uh, uh, inside the master timetable or outside the master timetable. But, uh, uh, you know, for every institution, there may, not, uh, there may be a different policy. No, no, it is not neglecting the importance of character development. If you can go through the graduate attributes, definitely the POs, uh, all these uh, um, uh, values, human values, everything is there. OB should be exposed to ChatGPT. They are all separate. Okay. No, whenever there is a new tool comes, you know, even uh, uh, with the computers. We could do a lot of things. So anyway, we should be, uh, no, anyway, we are exposed to ChatGPT and the tools and the, the, fact, the students who are sitting in front of us, they are well aware. Of it. So we have to face uh, anyway, any modification or restrictions to be if college is affiliated to university. Definitely, if the college is affiliated to university, we have some restrictions like uh, the, um, the individual score of the students for each uh, questions in the final at some some status at some is not available for the college so there we have to apply a different strategy uh, we have a, we are mentoring some of later colleges where we are doing it yeah okay so i think that's about the, the questions okay um What can we estimate a cost to develop an LMS for an institution? Uh, Madam, it is not uh, not that much costly. It's, it's, okay. Uh, if you can, if you want, uh, uh, definitely I can help you. Please contact me later. It's not costly. Even if somebody is expert in the even your institution, they can do it. Allowed at MTEC and Chat GPT should be allowed at MTEC and PhD level. It is already there. It's already there, I think. Yeah. 
Okay, then we'll uh, have a feedback section. And after that, uh, uh, we are expecting Dr. Rajan Gurikal, the Vice Chairman of Kerala State Air Education Council to join for the one review section. Before that, uh, just we will have a, a feedback session. I will share the link of a Mentimeter slide in the chat box. So just give your feedback uh, like. This is the question. Uh, there is a link in the chat box. You can go to that link and you can give your response. Or you can go to menti.com and there is a code at the top of the screen 79789316. Go to menti.com and you can type the code. So either way, you can do it. You can go to the link in the chat box. You can give the response there. What is your opinion about this blended model of FTP, which is incorporated? which incorporates both interactive live sessions and LMS-based tasks and assignments. So this is a case where uh, we are using both uh, online and uh, offline mode. We have live sections and uh, in between you are using the learning management system. So that even if you miss a particular session, you can uh, just go through the recorded videos you can do the task and assignments. So we can implement uh, this type of uh, learning methods in uh, every institution so that when we implement OB, it will be more useful. Voting is not closed. It's uh, sorry, so it's there. Thirty seconds more. So you can go to that link provided in the chat box or you can type menti.com and uh, use the code. The code is the top of the screen. Okay, so thank you for your feedback. Uh, participants can learn at their own pace and convenience. That is the highest response. Improve self-learning skill. Okay, so definitely this is useful for uh, implementing OB. More learning is happening no, through LMS. Yeah, very good. Thank you for your feedback and uh, we have more slides. How did your knowledge about OB progress through this FTP? You can use the same link which is there in the chat box, or you can go to menti.com and use the code. 
7978316 and give your response. I have shared the link once again in the chat box. If you are somebody is late, you can use that. Yes, happy to see that uh, many of uh, the participants are now experts in OB. It's a very good trend, yeah. Okay, thank you for your feedback. Uh, and the last one I will share. Just one more. Um, this is another link I will share and link. So I have shared another link in the chat box. You can just go through that link or uh, you can go to mendy.com and there's a different code, not the same code which you have used last time. 54324543, that is the new code. So you can give your suggestions so that uh, from next time you can consider your suggestions. You can go to that link or you can use mendy.com. You can type the code.
Okay. Thank you for your feedbacks. Yeah. Actually, LMS is available, I think, up to 27th of August. Thank you. And there's a question like, will the certificate have grades? Definitely you'll get a grade if you complete all the tasks and assignments. The procedure to download certificate that is uh, mentioned in the LMS itself. When you download the certificate, uh, you'll get uh, you'll get the information there itself. Okay. And in the LMS, you can just. Uh, there is a doubt clearance forum so that you can also collaborate and the research forum you can just go through the uh, the content already submitted by your peer team members and there are a lot of useful tools the content everything is um, in the learning management system just go through those content so that you can learn more um, just we will wait uh, Five seconds for a dragging curriculum, sir. September will have another faculty development program on mainly focusing on the research, how ChatGPT can be used for a research and research methodology, how you can easily publish papers. Many things are there. Uh, just a reminder uh, regarding the LMS and the certificate availability. Uh, the feedback form will be available in the LMS from 4 p.m. today. So it will not be sent to you separately. Uh, your certificate for the FDP will be available for download from the LMS by Wednesday, 23rd August. And this information will be intimated to you through mail. So kindly note that the link to download your certificate will be enabled only on the completion of the required task, MCQs and feedback in the LMS. You will have access to the LMS until 27th of August, that is still midnight. So please ensure that you have downloaded all the required materials and your certificate from the LMS before its access expires. Also, uh, most of the videos uh, will be available on our YouTube channel for your future reference.
Uh, we are waiting for Rajak Gurkhal sir. He will join immediately uh, for the validity section. It's a question like from 23rd onwards, we will be able to download certificates. So if we complete all tasks after that, but before 27th, then the grades won't be affected, right? Yeah, the grades will not be affected. You can download the certificate till 27th and you can do the task uh, till 27th. Uh, I heard in the news that ChatGPT may go bankrupt because of enormous cost on daily basis. Okay, don't worry about ChatGPT because uh, even if they go bankrupt, it will not affect our OV implementation or something. We are ju just using it as a tool. And uh, I don't think uh, it will be like that because uh, um, they are getting a lot of uh, money through the APIs. We are also using their API, we are developing some AI tools. So we, we are using it and uh, on a daily basis, we are paying for it. Getting the content. Uh, most of the content uh, is uh, available in the LMS. You can download uh, some PDF and uh, so that uh, it, uh, you can use it later. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, hi, hello, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, sir, we are audible. So we had uh, uh, completed the sections uh, today. Uh, uh, so we have gone through all these OB processes, uh, OB uh, concepts, then uh, ChatGPT and AI tools, and how we can use ChatGPT and AI tools for a, uh, implementing OB in a better way. Okay, okay. Uh, then we had the feedback session. Uh, we are getting very good feedback from the participants. Okay. We'll share all these uh, the reports later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have around uh, 2,700 participants joined for okay. this uh, okay. program okay. from all over India. Yeah. And uh, some of them are uh, attending the recorded sessions. Ah. Okay. Uh, is Carmel College uh, initiative, yeah. right? 
ராஜன் குருக்கல் வைஸ் சேர்மன் ஆஃப் கேரளா ஸ்டேட் ஹையர் எஜுகேஷன் கவுன்சில் டாக்டர் ராஜன் குருக்கல் இஸ் வைஸ் சான்சலர் ஆஃப் மகாத்மா காந்தி யூனிவர்சிட்டி கோட்டயம் He is a leading so Indian social scientist, historian, professor and writer. He has written many books and articles on different topics and also received awards for his work. So I welcome you, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, respected uh, uh, Principal Reverend Sister, Dr. Mendes and his team, my dear participants. Uh, I am happy to know that uh, a good number of you, around 2,000, uh, are participating uh, in this and you have just completed the program. I need hardly tell you how useful it was and I, I presume that uh, most of you have taken benefit out of this Uh, program uh, under the well experienced uh, experts uh, in the team of dr mendes uh, it's really important to follow outcome based education in the most effective manner and i understand that artificial intelligence technology uh, is of immense help and re- recently chat the uh, chat gpt uh, has become uh, quite important in accessing knowledge uh, ready in hand and it Uh, uh combined you know obe and uh, chat gpt uh really uh help the teachers as well as students uh gain the benefits of knowledge taking it beyond just remembering and uh, converting knowledge as related to needs there is nothing else that can that we can think of um for benefiting education now we have an increasing realization these days that learning is not just remembering but systematic understanding which is rendered possible by obe similarly uh, knowledge should be at the disposal of the seekers knowledge seekers knowledge seekers should certainly have their own problems relating to knowledge or they should be in need of contextualized knowledge and also uh, personalized as you know higher education is an intensely personal and self guided uh, uh, a rigorous in and rigorous enterprise now both obe and uh, chat gpt enable us to make it so further it is uh you know quite important to note that chat gpt's uh responses that are based on patterns and information learned during training and uh, um not always producing accurate and uh, factually correct answers but to a great extent the best available version available form of knowledge 
Additionally, you know, we all know that it does not have access to real-time information or knowledge beyond its training data. It's there. The role of Maverick teachers becomes important. Now, teachers are supposed to be critically aware of these limitations of chat GPT. But anyway, developing user interfaces beyond apps and tools, responding to touch, tap, and swipe, artificial intelligence is now enabling operation through physical actions, gestures, body movements, facial expressions, and words. We do not know where this technology is really taking us. It's unimaginably vast and in terms of application, unimaginably extensive. Augmented reality, AR, a digital photographic technology distinct in itself, joining with artificial intelligence creates rare visual experiences of virtual and actual objects coexisting. AR and AI combinations render this astonishing experience through 3D animation modeling and simulation. Using wearable audio video devices, transcending the confines of screens, one gets the curious experience of augmented reality that provides immersive feel. Through in-context videos, it can demonstrate how to do rather than describing what to know. Virtual reality completely immerses you in a virtual world shut off from the actual. Indeed, it provides a wonderful learning experience. Uh, similar imaging science already in use for teaching medical sciences is increasingly becoming crucial for technopedagogy. It's a fast emerging field of science technology aesthetics combined, addressing the chain of generation, collection, duplication, analysis, modification, and visualization of images that increasingly include image objects. So in various ways, uh, you know, digital technologies on one side, and then digital technology aided uh, teaching learning devices on the other are going to be uh, immensely influential in teaching learning process. Now, all this is possible only when you are trained in the basics of OBE on the one side and uh, of technopedagogy on the other for both the team uh, with Dr. Mendes are of uh, immediately, uh, uh, you know, great help. And uh, that accounts for the great number of participants uh, who always turn up. Now, frankly speaking, this is for the first time in my life I witness this amazing response from the teachers. We used to assiduously persuade teachers to participate in refresher courses, various orientation programs, and, and so on by giving incentives. Now it's quite interesting that teachers, without anybody's persuasion, participate in good number in programs like this, uh, this attests the effectiveness of hands-on program that Dr. Mendes and his team uh, organize. And then uh, various principals of colleges with great interest invite the team for conduct of programs like this. It's all, uh, you know, uh, immensely gratify 
uh, gratifies us and uh, once again you know underlining underscoring the importance of the program i congratulate the teachers who have drawn benefits out of the program and express my gratitude to dr mendes and his team and also reverend sister okay thank you very much thank you sir so now for the vote of thanks i welcome dr sister kochitresa kp principal of kamal college autonomous mala trishur my distinguished guests respected members and esteemed guests participants good afternoon to all yes we have it is Uh, ma'am your yeah, your voice is low so no yeah. sister oh, oh, audible alla technical problems sir uh, it's not audible mm -hmm. audible audible now yes sir now am any Uh, I think there is some kind of technical issues from your side.
Slightly better. Hello. Yes, sister. Uh, can I proceed with you? Uh, thanking session then. Ma'am? Hello, sister. Yeah, I think you can propose the vote of thanks on behalf of uh, sister. Shall okay. we proceed? Shall we proceed? So on behalf of the college and the organizing committee, I thank all of you for attending this session. I thank uh, Dr. Rajan Gurukul for his presence to this event. I thank Sunil Job sir uh, for the wonderful session in, in, over these seven days. And also Mendes Jacob sir for sharing his valuable insights on OBE. I thank all the participants, participants uh, for, uh, for your participation and we hope this program proves to be a valuable learning experience for you. So should you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to reach out to our support team. Thank you. Rakhi ma'am? Yes ma'am. Yeah, if I'm yeah, audible, if I'm the principal is here. You are audible. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. Our distinguished guest, a respected resource person, and esteemed participants, uh, good evening. Good to all. As we have reached at the end of the FDP program, in closing, it is with a sense of fulfillment and gratitude that we mark the completion of this enlightening seven day faculty development program on outcome based education and AI, essential AI tools for teachers. Over the course of these intensive sessions, we have embarked on a transformative journey, equipping ourselves with the knowledge, tools, and insight the shape of future education. Our exploration of outcome-based education has empowered, empowered us to reevaluate and refine our pedagogical approaches, uh, ensuring that our students not only acquiring knowledge, but also develop the essential skills to, to thrive in a dynamic world by interacting artificial intelligence tools no. into our teaching methodologies. We have unlocked the new realm of possibilities enhancing engagement, personalization, and efficiency in the learning process. Oh, no. A resounding note of appreciation goes to our esteemed oh. speakers and facilitators mm -hmm. whose expertise and yeah. passion have been instrumental in shaping this program. Their dedication to and advancing education and technology is truly commendable. Furthermore, I extend heartfelt gratitude to the organizers, especially Dr. Rajan Gurukul, sir, and Dr. Rajan Vargi, sir, 
from Kerala State Higher Education Council and Dr. Menjes and team IPSR Solutions. Our esteemed resource persons, Dr. Sunil, Dr. Menjes and Dr. Suresh. Behind the screen coordinators, especially Mr. Jaimon and the moderator, uh, Ms. Ragi and all the supporting staff who have worked tirelessly to ensure the seamless execution of this program. I also place on record of the effect of our IQSC team and our coordinator, Ms. Mary Philip, for taking the initiative and efforts to conduct this FDP successfully. Your commitment and meticulous planning have made this journey possible. I commend each participant for their active involvement, thoughtful contributions, and eagerness to embrace a new horizon. Our interactions, discussions, and shared experiences have enriched us all, fostering a community of educators committed to driving positive change. As we disperse, let us carry forward the lessons learned, the connections forged, and the innovative ideas sparked during this FDP. Together, we can create a ripple effects that transcends our classrooms, enriching the educational landscapes for generations to come. Thank you, all of you, for your unwavering enthusiasm. And may our collective efforts continue to illuminate our path towards a brighter and a more AI, artificial intelligence, enhanced education future. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Mendes, bye. Sir, thank you very much. I know you are very busy these days because of the meetings now on Monday, and Rajan sir was yes. saying like that. So yes. In spite of the busy schedule, thank you for that. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, but this is also a very important uh, thing. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, all the participants and uh, um, the principal, IQC coordinator, and all faculty members from Mala, Carmel College, Mala. Thank you for your cooperation and support.